What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my main event breakdown and best bet for UFC 281. We have Israel Adesanya going against Alex Pereira. And we are back breaking down a very intriguing fight. Uh, we have Israel Adesanya going against Alex Pereira, a fight that I'm very much looking forward to. I'm sure a lot of you are looking forward to. I'm sure this is going to be a very highly debated fight with a lot of people on both sides. So we're going to talk about uh, who I'm picking and the best bet for this fight. I think there's a couple spots that really do stick out depending on which side you like and just in general. So I uh, cannot wait to break it down. Before we get started, guys, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. That is much, much appreciated. More UFC 281 content content coming out throughout the week. Uh, my full card breakdown and prediction video should be out on Monday. So uh, got ahead, worked my butt off over the past couple days, and I'm about done researching the entire card. A couple spots sticking out. If you don't want access to my early bets, be sure to sign up at dfsbythenumbers.com. You got articles, early bets, you know, Discord, stats, all the good stuff on there. Check it out at dfsbythenumbers.com. But I say we get into the main event here. Israel Adesanya, Alex Pereira, and this fight is this fight is so intriguing. Um, to be honest, I've been kind of flipping back and forth uh, through the fight. I did a lot of research on this fight. Um, obviously, these guys have fought before twice, and that's going to be the big narrative this week. You're going to hear this one million times. That's why I'm getting this out on a Sunday. So maybe you can be the, the first person to hear uh, somebody say it. And uh, these guys have fought two times, but they have fought in kickboxing. And um, the big thing, you know, Alex Brer is 2-0 against Israel Adesanya in kickboxing. Uh, the first fight... Pereira won a decision. We'll talk more about that fight. And then in the second fight, Pereira actually knocked out Adesanya. And as far as I'm concerned, that was the only time Adesanya has ever been knocked out, um, kickboxing or MMA. So Alex Pereira is, is the only person to ever knock out Israel Adesanya, which is which makes the fight very intriguing. I mean, it's it's kind of weird to be honest. Seeing a, a six and one guy, you know, stepping in, wins a couple fights over some some lackluster guys. I mean, the Sean Strickland win was good. Um, Andreas Michalidis, you know, not the best in the world, you know, Bruno Silva, not the best guy in the world, but, you know, a couple fights in, he's already fighting for a title. So, um, there's a lot I want to talk about, um, in this fight, but first let us start with the tail of the tape. So these guys are really similar, which is interesting because typically both guys are going to have a size advantage over their opponent, but Adesanya, he's 33 years old. He's six foot four with an 80 inch reach. He's 23 and one and four and one in his last five fights. Alex Pereira, 35 years old. He is six foot four. He has an 80-inch reach. He is 6-1, and one, and he is 5-0 and oh in his last five fights. So in terms of the height and reach, I mean, they're the, the exact same, which is very, very interesting. Um, I do want to talk about the odds for this fight. So um, Israel Adesanya is the favorite. Open up minus 200, currently minus 183. Alex Pereira opened up plus 170. He is currently plus 158. I'm curious to see where the line does go. Um, there's a lot of Israel Adesanya haters out there. I've heard a lot of people, um, you know, call him boring. I mean, I, I hit up my brother today. I was like, who you got, Adesanya or, or Pereira this week? He was like, I, I got Pereira. Adesanya's boring. I'm like, okay. I mean, boring boring wins fights sometimes. And Adesanya's done a great job at, you know, making fights, you know, kind of boring. I mean, um, in the Jared Cannonier fight, was it the most exciting fight? No, it was not. But he went out there and he did what he needed to do. He avoided risks and he was able to win the unanimous decision. And that's what he's going to have to do in this fight here. Um, what really stuck out to me initially was, you know, I'm looking through the rankings, the UFC middleweight rankings, and I'm just looking through these rankings and I'm like, man, I don't see any of these guys touching Israel Adesanya. I mean, you take a look at these middle rate rankings. I mean, Jerry Cannonier ranked second. I mean, he already beat him. Robert Whitaker, you know, ranked number one. I mean, he beat him twice. Marvin Vittori, he beat him twice. Derek Brunson knocked him out in the first round. Paula Costa knocked him out. Sean Strickland, you know, Jack Hermanson, Darren Till, Andre Meniz, Kevin Ga Calvin Gastelum, Nazardine Imovov, Dr Driscus Duplessis, Chris Curtis. I mean, none of these guys are going to beat Adesanya. But Alex Pereira, who is ranked number four, I think he's the one guy that has a chance to beat Adesanya. The other guys, I don't see him beating Adesanya, and I think Adesanya can be champion for a while. Um, unless, you know, Hamzat Chemaev comes up a weight class and fights at middleweight. Um, maybe Bo Nickel in a couple of years, but I don't see anybody touching Adesanya for a long time, but Alex Pereira would be the one guy 
that could potentially beat Adesanya. I mean, he's done it twice before, right? In kickboxing. So let's get into those kickbo kickboxing fights. So the first one, like I was talking about, it was a, a decision win for uh, Pereira. Went back and watched that fight. It was a very close fight. Um, honestly, it could have went either way. I personally did score it for Adesanya. I thought Adesanya did very good work. And I went back and watched that fight. I'm like, man, Adesanya fights a lot different. And of course, of course he does. I mean, that fight was, was, was years ago. And both these guys have, you know, evolved over time. And Adesanya fights a lot different. Nowadays, he's more, you know, risk adverse. He does not take as many risks. He's not, you know, eating big shots. He's not willing to eat big shots. And he's not going to do that here. But he kind of got a little bit reckless in some of those fights um, against Alex Pereira. And the second time came around and uh, Adesanya was doing good work. He was winning the fight. And then he got caught. So that's that's the big narrative, like I said. Alex Pereira, 2-0 and against Israel Adesanya in kickboxing. This is, of course, MMA. Um, but what's interesting about this fight is I think it's going to play out on the feet the entire time. Israel Adesanya has attempted, I think, two or three takedowns. He has landed a, a massive zero takedowns. So to think Adesanya is going to come in here and wrestle Alex Pereira, it would it'd be foolish to think that. It would be absolutely foolish to think. It's not going to happen. Adesanya is going to strike with Alex Pereira. Initially, I was leaning... Alex Pereira, man, until I went back and watched the fight between the two and just watched Adesanya as of late. And I think his risk adverse style is really going to give Alex Pereira problems. Like Adesanya is very good at not getting hit. He's very good at not getting hit clean. And he's not going to want to get hit clean against Alex Pereira. If he does, he's probably getting knocked out. Pereira is terrifying. He has terrifying power. Um, but we are in the big cage. I think the big cage does favor Israel Adesanya. Pereira has a couple of his fights. Um, I believe we're in the apex, the smaller cage, but we're in the big cage here. And like I said, that does favor Adesanya. He's going to be able to move on the outside um, and just kind of make the fight boring. I mean, that's what he does. You know, I, I personally don't think it's boring. I think it's fun to watch Adesanya fights. I think he's a very exciting fighter for, for me at least, but maybe for the more casual fans, maybe they, they don't think he's the most exciting fighter at all, but he does what it takes to win. And sometimes those are the guys you want to bet on. You want to bet on the quote unquote, boring fighters, you know, the Kamara Usmans, you know, guys like that, that just go out there and, and know how to win minutes and know how to win. And Adesanya obviously knows how to win. The dude is 23 and one. So obviously Pereira, if he wins, it's going to be by knockout. I don't see Pereira winning a decision. And, and something that stuck out to me with these betting odds and on, on DraftKings Sportsbook, they have the decision only, which means if this fight goes to decision, um, you know, if Adesanya wins, um, it's minus 450. Minus 450, the decision only for Adesanya. Alex Pereira, plus 300, decision only. I mean, that that's telling a story there. That They're saying that if this fight does go to decision, it's far more likely that Adesanya is going to win it, and I completely agree, and that's how I see the fight. I do think Adesanya is going to be the minute winner. The biggest thing between these two, to me, is is defense. The striking defense, it's, it's night and day. Adesanya's striking defense is much better. Alex Pereira is willing to eat shots at times. He had a couple big shots from Bruno Silva. His chin's really good, but his striking defense is, is not the best. He's going to kind of plot forward where Adesanya is going to be kind of sticking on the outside, uh, moving a lot. And again, that risk adverse style, which I think is really going to favor him here, but it's an MMA fight. It only takes one shot, especially from a guy like Alex Pereira. And that's what makes this fight so tough to call. Um, and, you know, back to these odds, you got the finish only, which is the opposite. If this fight finishes, you know, we got uh, Alex Pereira minus 165, Israel Adesanya plus 120. So they're saying if there's a finish, it's most likely going to be on the Alex Pereira side. And I agree with that. I don't think Adesanya, I mean, maybe he could finish Alex Pereira late, but he's not going to go out of his way to get a finish. I mean, Israel Adesanya in the UFC, I think he has maybe three finishes. He's very content to go out there and win a decision. He doesn't care if you call him boring or not. He's going to go out there and win minutes, win the fight, and that's why he's 23-1. and one. He does not put himself into bad spots. He does not get hit clean more often than not. And I think he's going to fight a very smart fight here. He has to. He's not going to go stand in the middle, point down, and, and stand and bang with Alex Press and say, bring it on. No, he's not going to do that. He's going to stick on the outside, stick and move, and avoid that big shot from Alex Pereira. So after going back and forth, I, I lean Adesanya. I think Adesanya can avoid that big shot. He just does such a good job at avoiding that big shot, not getting hit clean. I know it's a complete different fight, but you know, against Jared Cannonier, he did just that. Jared Cannonier hits like a truck. He was able to avoid those big shots, you know, make the fight kind of boring, you know? 
Stick on the outside. Stick and move. And I think it's going to look a lot like that. This is a five-round fight that favors Adesanya. We're in the big cage that favors Adesanya. We've never seen Pereira in a fourth or fifth round. We've seen Adesanya in plenty of fourth and fifth rounds. Adesanya's fought the much, much better competition as a professional MMA fighter. Whereas Alex Pereira, I mean, he beat Sean Strickland, but Sean Strickland came in there with a crap game plan. He beat Andreas Michalidis. He beat Bruno Silva. I mean, I need to see a, a little bit more. But like I said, man, if anybody in these rankings, this top 15 is beating Adesanya, it, it's, it's Pereira. But outside of that, I don't see anybody touching Adesanya for, for a while, honestly. I think he's going to be champ for, for at least a couple more years. Like I said, unless Chemaev comes up and fights him at 185. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I like, I like Adesanya in this matchup. In terms of a betting perspective, I'm kind of frustrated a little bit. They had the under four and a half rounds sitting at plus 140. I would have not minded that. But after digging to the fight a little bit more, um, I kind of lean the Adesanya decision. And I know on DraftKings and FanDuel, they have like the Adesanya like four or five decision. I know FanDuel has the four or five decision, but DraftKings has the um, the round five or decision. So on FanDuel, I would look at that, that four or five decision. Um, and then on DraftKings, I would look at the uh, round five or decision, which the round five or decision looks to be minus 110 for Adesanya. I don't hate that. But I wouldn't mind getting that extra round in there for the 4-5 decision on FanDuel Sportsbook. If you like Prayer, there's, there's one way you bet it. And there's one way only. I mean, you bet him by knockout. He's not going to go out there and, in my opinion, win a decision against Adesanya. I'd be fairly surprised if he did so. Um, he's not going to go out there and submit Adesanya. I mean, I'd be fairly surprised if he did so. I don't think this fight touches the mat. If he wins, it's going to be by knockout. And if you like that, Alex Prayer by knockout is plus 275 on DraftKings Sportsbook. So give me Israel Adesanya. Give me Israel Sana to Adesanya to win by decision. And the bet I'm liking is that 4-5 or five decision on Fandle, no line yet, or that round 5 or decision on DraftKings Sportsbook, minus 110. I think this fight does get extended, and I think Adesanya takes the decision. But I like getting those extra two rounds in there just in case Pereira does tire out. Like I said, we've never seen him in a 4th or 5th round. So give me Adesanya for the win. And I say uh, he gets it done. He keeps the belt. And I think he's going to keep the belt for at least a couple more years. So Adesanya for the win. Adesanya by decision. Um, leave a like on your way out, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. It is much appreciated as always. Make sure you guys stay tuned for some content throughout the week going live. Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And then Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims. Going to have a full panel uh, this Saturday for best bets. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And again, follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram, DFS by the numbers. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, hit me up there. And uh, yeah, guys, best of luck. Should be a fun main event. Can't wait to see how it plays out. Best of luck for UFC 281. Adesanya Pereira. Should be a fun card. See you guys.